Even though the Dallas Cowboys aren't currently playing games, there is always something going on here at the Star. Dennis Rodman was just here. You got a chance to talk with him. But the next thing for the Cowboys is training camp in Oxnard. We will both be there. Which rookie are you most excited to watch in training camp? They need Jalen, the wide receiver, mm -hmm. to be good Tolbert right away. Right. Because they need a rotational starter right away. So I think that's the guy that you, that all eyes will be on. And yeah. then, of course, it's easier to watch offense in a scope position too. But somewhere on this list, you have to also put uh, the top rookie, Tyler Smith, mm -hmm. because they need to accelerate him into the starting lineup. And as long as we're covering all our bases here, we might as well get to uh, the pass rusher, Sam Williams. So yeah. I think all three of those guys are critical early. But let's go with Tolbert as the guy that needs to help them the most, the yeah. soonest. And him and Dak Prescott already connecting a lot. Why don't you finish this sentence for me? In this offseason, the Dallas Cowboy that I've heard the most about is... Hmm. <laughs> Well, it's hard to get around Dak Prescott, sure. isn't it? Uh, and Dak Prescott's reformation, uh, in a sense, of his body is a is a major story and an important story. Yeah. I think it's important to note, you know, he he's always listed somewhere between you know two thirty two and two thirty eight pounds. He hasn't lost weight. Yeah. Uh, and and when he says baby fat, you know, there's pictures of him uh, out there with you know shirtless pictures from two years ago, yeah. and throwing, you know. He doesn't have any baby. It's not fat. like Tom Brady, circa his NFL draft photo. Right, where he doesn't look, <laughs> where he doesn't look particularly athletic. Right. No, he. Uh, um, Dak's been jacked uh, at one level or another ever since he got in the league, and he's never been. He's been thick, mm -hmm. but he's not baby fat. I think he's trying to be self-effacing there. <laughs> but the Dak Prescott with no ankle surgery, mm -hmm. no shoulder problem, no calf problem, yeah. he's central to everything that they do here. And it's maybe a little bit of a cliche, mm -hmm. my answer to you. Yeah. But the fact is this is a quarterback league and a quarterback team. Yeah. Let's talk about the more lean Dak Prescott. How do you think that might affect his game and therefore affect the Cowboys? Game? Mike McCarthy told us the other day that when they were doing his off-season stuff last year and then to training camp, and I recall this being true, it was a ramp-up process, and they didn't do everything early. Then they, they injected some additional things as they went. Then came the shoulder in right. the summer. Yeah. Well, that, that caused all those things to come apart. Then he plays the first six or seven games at an MVP level. Then comes the calf. Uh, and the next thing you know, they peeled way back on what they might be able to do in terms of his mobility, flexibility, yeah. elusiveness. Those things are back. That doesn't mean, as they've joked around here in this building, he's going to get 20 carries a game. It's not that. Um, but, that would be crazy. Yeah, but but as a touchdown threat in short yardage, they didn't do that much last year with uh -huh. him. They didn't want to put him in harm's way. He's there. As a guy who can extend plays, he's there now. And so are they going to all of a sudden uh, ask him to be Michael Vick? No. <laughs> are they going to ask him to be more like Dak Prescott was as a rookie when, when using his legs was an additional weapon? Absolutely so. Oh, that'll be fun to watch. Another Dallas Cowboy player who has some lofty goals is Mike Parsons, but who's to say that he won't reach those goals because so far he's shattered all expectations. So the reigning defensive rookie of the year, what would you consider successful season for Micah Parsons? The joke around here, and we haven't had a chance to put this question to him, but we will. Yeah. Name three things that you think you can't do. <laughs> well, uh, and, and I think he would like actually take that to heart. Like, I don't think there is one. I, I wonder, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. And if we said it limited to athletics, mm -hmm. um, that would be one question. If we said, how about beyond athletics? Yeah. I think if you told him, do you think he could learn to play the piano? Right. Or uh, speak Mandarin Chinese, <laughs> I think he'd say yes to that too. As it stands here now, he is saying yes to the idea of not only leading the team in sacks, yeah. the tank challenge, um, not only getting 15 sacks, mm -hmm. which would of course exceed his 13. Now he's talking about, oh, I can I can be the all-time single season sack leader. I can go get 23 right. and be Michael Strahan, which to honestly, to do that, you'd have to line up a defensive end right. every snap and you'd have to be free to rush the passer. That's not gonna be his job here, so that's unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. Although don't tell him we said that. Yeah. And then the other day he told Trayvon Diggs, I think I'm gonna challenge you for the interception yeah. lead. Now, um, you may know this off the top of your head, you may too. The number of interceptions Micah had last year as a rookie, zero. Right. The number of interceptions Micah had in his two years at Penn State, zero. So this is his new challenge. <laughs> so why not? And he says, I've been working on my hands. And, and I do think, this reminds me
of uh, Emmett Smith's rookie year, and I had the uh, honor of doing the first one-on-one -on -one interview when, with Emmett when he first came here. Yeah. And, he, and we're having this talk, and he says, yeah, they always said I was too slow. And I'm writing all this down. And that made sense, because he was not a world-class sprinter. Okay. And they always said I was too small. And I'm looking at him, I'm going, I don't know, man. You you're, look, don't look small to me. And they always said I was too short. And I'm like, you know, he's 5'9-ish, right. so he's not tall. But I, I finally said, Emmett, uh, who said this to you? Yeah. Who said that? Well, it turned out he had just kind of created these concepts in his mind right. as hurdles to, to, to jump over or bowl through. Yeah. They think I can't do it. Yeah. They, 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 even though there was no they. Uh -huh. So in the case of Micah, there is no they saying no. It's just Micah creating, as you know, these right. challenges for himself that, to, to make his work day all the more fun. That, that's why, as Bill Parcells said, you lift all them weights. Mike is going and lifting all them weights with a challenge yeah. to accomplish this ridiculous thing and that ridiculous thing. <laughs> the ridiculous thing may be Mandarin Chinese, playing the piano, or leading the team in interceptions. I guess we'll find out. So for the Cowboys, they did make quite a few off-season moves, but do you think they made enough off-season moves? And was there anything that they're going to look back on and maybe regret? And of course, hindsight is always twenty twenty, so this is an impossible question to ask, answer. Well, Sports Illustrated, uh, uh, Albert Breer and Connor Orr, two respected colleagues, did a thing on off-season winners and losers. Yeah. And the Cowboys jump out in their grouping. Um, they jump out in the sense that they say they didn't hit the accelerator mm. in terms of uh, acquiring talent. And I think that much is true. Right. Uh, Maybe you were expecting more headlines and a little bit more fancier names. Yeah, and uh, and more spending. Mm -hmm. um, now, what, you've come to watch the way the Cowboys operate, and wild spending is not the way they operate. Yeah. Trying to keep a balanced roster and a balanced cap is Stephen Jones' philosophy, right or wrong. Right. But uh, the fellows at Sports Illustrated did write that, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's obvious that the way the Bucks and the Rams have done it mm -hmm. is the way. Mm -hmm. And I would dispute that. Um, the Bucks way won them a championship. Yeah. The Rams way has them in the Super Bowl twice in four years. That is pretty good evidence, but I don't think there is a the way. Yeah. Uh, there, there's not a singular way. In fact, there's 32 different ways to skin this cat. I agree that, that it, it would have been um, more advantageous for this roster at this time to be more aggressive. Uh -huh. uh, and I still think the Cowboys could be more aggressive mm -hmm. right now. Anthony Barr, as we speak, is still out there. Mm -hmm. um, Will Fuller, the wide receiver, is still out there. Right. Uh, an aggressive move to guys like that would make the roster better. There's no question about that. But that doesn't mean that not doing it is automatically wrong. Right. With mini camps in the high hindsight and training camp just ahead of us, is there anything around here that's being whispered about that maybe fans should know about? I, th I think that they need to come to grips with what their offensive line is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I like what they're doing with kind of the honor system almost, <laughs> uh, um, where they're honoring the fact that Connor McGovern is a veteran, has been here, mm -hmm. so you get to be the starting left guard for now. But the longer that they play that game, and I think it's an artificial game, the more they delay Tyler Smith taking over and hurrying up and being the starting left guard. They're not a better team. If Connor McGovern's a starting left guard, yeah. um, instead of Connor Williams from last year, the offensive line's not better. Yeah, and you need it to be better. And they need to be substantially better. Um, so I don't think you need to play with him as the backup left guard. I don't think you need to fiddle with the idea of going and also learning how to play left tackle. Mm -hmm. That's a two year away project, I think. Hopefully that's, that's Tyron's contract and hopefully he plays it out. Mm -hmm. You're asking too much of him to say, learn two positions and be great at both. And you're asking too little of him to say, why don't you just be the backup left guard for now? Right. Uh, let, let's step on that accelerator and have Tyler Smith be the starting left guard like today. <laughs>